Hello chemists! This is Ms. Placino and you are watching Screencast 14.1, An Introduction to Organic Chemistry. In today's lesson we're going to talk about some of the fundamental concepts behind organic chemistry and we're going to learn how to draw or represent uh, different organic molecules. Organic chemistry really focuses around the study of one single element. That element is carbon. So we're going to be looking exclusively at carbon-based compounds. Um, not every single element that contains carbon is considered organic. For example, we've seen carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide earlier this semester. We really don't consider those organic compounds. If you end up with an ionic compound that has carbon in it, uh, for example, something like sodium carbonate, we don't really count that as organic either. Um, but there are tons and tons of molecules that are classified as organic and we'll talk more about them during this lesson. So you might be wondering, how is it possible that we're just gonna look at carbon? Uh, carbon is really unique as it's able to undergo something called catenation. Catenation is the covalent bonding of an element to itself to form chains and rings. This is something that other elements don't readily do. Um, if you think back to the bonding unit, we know that carbon has four unshared electrons in its valence shell. Therefore, it wants to form four bonds. This is really, really unique and essentially makes carbon like a super bonder. It can form four single bonds. It can form a single bond, uh, sorry, a double bond and two single bonds, two double bonds, a triple bond and a single bond, and any combination to get up to four. You might be thinking, well, wait a second, won't other elements in the same group as carbon, such as silicon, have similar properties? Generally, that's true, but this is a major exception. Even silicon that's just, you know, one um, row down from carbon cannot undergo catenation to nearly the same extent that carbon can. So carbon is extremely unique, and there are thousands upon thousands of different molecules that are going to be organic and carbon-based. Many of the ones that we're going to talk about during this unit are hydrocarbons. Hopefully in the word hydrocarbon, you can take some very educated guesses about what elements are contained. Uh, obviously carbon, hopefully, you know, no surprises there. And the prefix hydro, well, we don't mean water here, we mean hydrogen. So hydrocarbons are elements that contain only hydrogen and carbon. This is a really simple hydrocarbon that we've got on the screen right now. Uh, this is called butane. And don't worry too much about naming just yet. We'll get into a whole lesson on that. Butane is an example of a saturated hydrocarbon. You probably have heard the term saturated before. Uh, we talked about it in the solution unit. When a solution is holding as much solute as it, or I should say, when a solvent is holding as much solute as it possibly can under the given temperature and pressure conditions, we say that it's saturated. Um, you also might have heard the word saturated in terms of fats. Uh, a saturated fat is a hydrocarbon. It's going to look kind of similar to what we've got on the screen, uh, just much, much bigger. When we say saturated in organic chemistry, what we're talking about are compounds that contain only carbon-carbon single bonds. So if you look at our four carbon atoms here, they're all joined together by single bonds. Another way to think about this is that the carbon-containing compound is holding as many hydrogens as it possibly can. It's saturated with, carb uh, with hydrogens. Personally, I think looking at the carbon-carbon bonds is the best way to do it, but some people told me they like to think about it the other way. Um, you can imagine that a molecule like this is not going to be classified as saturated. It can't be. We don't have only single, single, bo uh, single bonds between carbon atoms. This is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. This is called 2-butene. Again, we'll deal with naming uh, in the next lesson. In an unsaturated hydrocarbon, we have at least one double or triple carbon-carbon bond. A common misconception is that in an unsaturated molecule, they have to all be double bonds or all be triple bonds. That's definitely not the case. In the entire molecule, you just need one bond between carbon atoms that is not a single bond. So hopefully it's pretty clear to see here those two carbon atoms are bonded together with a double bond. And compared to our last uh, molecule, the saturated hydrocarbon, um, we've lost two hydrogens. This should make sense. We can't have 
hydrogens bonded to those carbon atoms. Otherwise, we've given carbon too many bonds. Instead of the four that it's supposed to have, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Carbon's really good at bonding, but it cannot have five bonds under the majority of circumstances. So saturated hydrocarbons, all single bonds, unsaturated hydrocarbons, um, at least one double or triple bond between the carbon uh, atoms. Today I want to talk about a group of hydrocarbons called alkanes. Uh, alkanes are really just molecules that contain only single bonds between carbon atoms. They're a type of saturated hydrocarbon. Naming and drawing compounds is going to be a really huge aspect of this unit and New York State has given you some help. Um, if you've got your reference table, take a look at table P. You've got prefixes for different uh, number of carbon atoms. For example, if the compound just has one carbon atom, it gets the prefix meth. If you've got two carbon atoms in the longest chain, you get the prefix eth. Um, three is prop, four, bute, so on and so forth. You can read down the line. We're going to focus on those today. Organic compounds are also able to contain other elements. Um, a lot of times we'll see them containing nitrogen, oxygen, uh, sometimes sulfur, uh, sometimes phosphorus, and the halogens. We'll save those for another day. I want to look at how to represent um, our organic compounds using different formulas. So we're going to talk about molecular, structural, stereochemical, condensed structural, and something called a skeletal or bond line formula. A molecular formula, by this point in the semester, you should be pretty familiar with it. A molecular formula is just showing the number of atoms of each element present in the compound. Methane, we know the prefix meth means one carbon. Um, so we've got our carbon atom. Carbon needs to form four bonds. So we've got CH4. The prefix eth, based on table P, means two. So ethane is going to have two carbon atoms in it. And then since this is ending in A-N-E, we know what's an alkane, which is a saturated hydrocarbon. So a single bond between those two carbon atoms and then fill it with as many hydrogens as possible. We get the formula C2H6. Move on to our third example. We've got propane. The prefix prop means three. So I've got single bonds between the three carbon atoms, and I'm going to put as many hydrogens around it as possible. So I'd end up with a formula C3H8. In organic chemistry, molecular formulas aren't super helpful. When we're working with really small, simple organic molecules, such as the three we've got on the screen, there's really only one way to arrange those atoms to end up with uh, a valid structure. When we get to larger, more complicated organic molecules, molecular formulas are going to come up short because they don't really tell you anything about how the atoms are bonded together or how the molecule is arranged. A lot of times in organic chemistry, we're going to use structural formulas. Basically, Lewis diagrams, um, oftentimes without the like unshared electron pairs, like the dots all over the molecule, we'll use those to represent our uh, organic compounds. Structural formulas show us how atoms are arranged in space. Uh, so methane we know is CH4. This is a molecule we've drawn many, many times before. It's going to look like this. Ethane, we've got the two carbon atoms single bonded together, and then all the hydrogens single bonded to the carbons. Really isn't any other structure you can come up with. You can kind of change the orientation of this drawing, maybe, you know, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, uh, but it's still the same structure. Same thing with propane. This is what the propane molecule would look like. We've got our three carbon atoms all bonded together with a single bond. And then we're going to give the carbons as many hydrogens as they need to get up to those four bonds. In a structural formula, um, people can kind of be led to believe that these molecules are very flat, uh, just kind of like two dimensional, everything's in the same plane. If you think back to molecular geometry, and I know for a lot of people that's kind of a struggle, if your central atom, uh, like in the example of methane, has four bonded pairs of electrons, or four atoms bonded to it, and no unshared pair of electrons, it isn't flat. It takes on the tetrahedral geometry. 
In our stereochemical formulas, we're trying to show or represent what the molecule is going to look like in three dimension. Instead of that very flat, very planar molecule, we're trying to give it a shape. So with methane, we have uh, these dotted lines or dashed lines, I guess you can say, and these wedges. The dashed line is trying to represent a hydrogen atom that's going back into the, into the screen. Um, so this hydrogen is not on the same plane as this hydrogen carbon and hydrogen atom. It's like away from you. On the other hand, we've got this kind of bolded line. We call it a wedge. That's supposed to represent a hydrogen atom sticking out directly at you. And again, you know, this is a two-dimensional drawing, but we're trying to show what the three-dimensional shape would look like. For our purposes, this is probably overkill at this level of chemistry, um, but if you go on to take actual organic chemistry, um, picturing what the molecule looks like in three dimensions is really important, and this can be very helpful in that process. We're gonna build some molecules too in class. Um, so you can see firsthand that these things are anything but flat. You can get a feel for the geometry. So in ethane, we've got two hydrogens sticking out at us, two hydrogen atoms pointing back into the screen, two hydrogen atoms and the two carbon atoms all on the same plane. Propane, we've got that represented a little bit differently. Um, we're kind of zigzagging now, which is a more realistic representation of what this molecule would look like. And the same idea, that tetrahedral geometry around every carbon atom. Two atoms bonded to carbon will be in the same plane. One of the atoms has to jut out at you. The other is going to point away from you. And again, don't get too overwhelmed by this. I want you to be aware that stereochemical formulas exist, but this is not something I'm really going to demand that you use when drawing your structures. A lot of times in regions chemistry and in organic chemistry in general, we'll use condensed structural formulas. So most people like how easy the molecular formula is to write, but appreciate how the structural formula is giving us information about how things are bonded together. The condensed structural formula is supposed to give us the best of both worlds. It's a hybrid of the molecular and structural formulas. We don't really have a condensed structural formula for methane, it's just CH4. But if you think about the structure of ethane, I'll just draw it up here again real quick. When we go to do or to write a condensed structural formula, we kind of just want to move one carbon atom at a time and state how many hydrogens are bonded to it. So if I just look at this part of the ethane molecule right now, I have CH3. I'll move on to my next carbon atom, which also happens to be CH3. So I'd represent ethane with a condensed structural formula of CH3, CH3. Again, this is a really small, simple molecule, so perhaps this is overkill. You can imagine as I get two larger and larger molecules, having this shortcut available and still being able to kind of visualize what the molecule looks like could prove to be very helpful. Uh, see if you can figure out propane on your own. If you're thinking CH3, CH2, CH3, you are absolutely correct. As molecules um, like the uh, straight chain alkanes become longer and longer and longer, instead of writing CH2, you know, 10 times or whatever you need, it's not uncommon to put parentheses around the CH2 and then use the appropriate subscripts. For example, the butane molecule that we had earlier uh, for the example of a saturated hydrocarbon is C4H10. To draw it out, it would be CH3, CH2 with a subscript of 2, and then CH3. Um, so that's a shortcut that we can use to prevent you from having to write extremely long formula names, uh, extremely long formula, um, I guess just formulas. Okay. The last one that I want to talk about is the skeletal uh, or bond line formulas. This is something that does not really come up in regions chemistry, but a lot of students prefer to represent molecules this way because it's so much faster. Uh, this is a shortcut technique that organic chemists use all the time because they would spend hours drawing molecules. And a lot of time with your molecules, the shape is really extremely important. So this is going to provide us with a very abbreviated way to draw organic compounds. 
So we don't have an abbreviated way to do this for methane. Methane CH4 is already pretty short. Ethene looks like this. Yes, it is just the line. You might be thinking, well, how is that supposed to represent anything? At the, in this case, I guess they're not really vertices, but at the end of each line, you should imagine that a carbon atom is there. Unless otherwise noted, it's safe to assume the carbon atoms are going to have however many hydrogens bonded to them so that they can uh, have a total of four bonds. So instead of drawing out the two carbon atoms and the three hydrogen atoms, we just draw this line. So we've got the one CH3 at one end of the line, the other CH3 at the opposite end of the line. Propane. Propane looks like this. Can you justify to yourself why propane would be represented this way using the skeletal or bond line formula? Uh, the ends we just talked about, those are CH3s. This corner must be a CH2. Every end or like vertice or corner is going to have a carbon atom with however many hydrogens it needs to fill or to reach its four bonds. Um, so this isn't something that I'm going to require you to know how to do since it is beyond the scope of this course. Um, if I give you a quiz or on your test, I'm not going to represent molecules using the bond line formula, uh, but feel free to draw them that way in your homework or on quizzes and tests. I know what they mean. Just make sure that you are very careful when you're drawing as it is kind of easy to lose track of exactly how many carbon atoms you are stringing together. All right, you've got a couple of practice problems with butane, pentane, and hexane. Uh, practice with it. Just make sure that you feel comfortable using the molecular structural condensed structural formulas. And go ahead. These are simple molecules. Try out the skeletal or bond line formula. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I hope you found this helpful.